So check this out. I am thrilled with the reception that this channel has been getting. It is really cool to see people, you know, enjoy my videos and really get something out of them. And one of the questions I've been getting a lot is, how do I get started? Some people have been asking if I could maybe do like a intro to DIY video. And I think this is the perfect product to do that. I'm gonna go nice and slow. I'll put some close-up shots so you can see how to actually build the thing. And by the end of this video, I hope you will be feeling confident enough that you too can build something like this and that there really is nothing to it. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's not a difficult thing. And a project like this, really anybody with some basic tools should be able to put together. So let's go ahead and open this. And this is what you get when you, when you order it. Now, if you've never done a music DIY project, I recommend that you get what's known as a full kit. So this is an example of a full kit. It's a box and it contains everything that you need to get this project happening. So it's got a bag of parts. This is all the stuff that you need to, to build. There's build instructions, and then there's the PCB, the printed circuit board, and the front panel. Okay, so a full kit contains all this stuff, and you don't have to go find parts or, or deal with anything else like that. Once you get more comfortable doing projects like this, if you've got a few full kit builds under your belt and you're feeling confident, what you can do is do a partial kit. So, you know, in that case, you always get the circuit board and the front panel, and then maybe you get some of these components or you don't get any of these components and you just get a link and it's on you to go find these parts. I wouldn't recommend that though. Just start with a full kit, get confident with what you're doing and then work your way up to partial kits. So I read these online before I jumped in and you can tell that this is actually pretty well put together. You've got nice instructions, it's color so you can see the parts and you know, see what goes where. It's pretty detailed and you also have a list of the, the actual parts that will go on there. I counted 31 different components that need to go onto the PCB. Some of them you get more than one, like you get more than one diode, more than one resistor. And so there's 75 parts that go on here. And I think that's the perfect number for a beginner. And I say that because if you make a mistake and there's only 75 parts on here in total, it's easy enough just to look at what you did and sort of figure out what went wrong. I mean, usually you can sort of tell if there's a bad solder joint or if you have a part like a diode on backward. If you have a board with hundreds of components on here, well, it becomes a little bit more tricky to troubleshoot problems like that. So I wouldn't recommend starting there. Start with a simple product like this or something like it. And, um, and you should hopefully have a successful build and you'll be excited and you'll want to keep doing more DIY stuff and then pretty soon you'll find yourself uh, starting a YouTube channel. So basically what we're gonna do is just follow the instructions as they have it here. One thing I should mention that I like to do before I start is actually take some isopropyl alcohol or IPA and just give this board a good wipe down. You know, you, you never know where this board has been or somebody with greasy hands has touched it or something. You don't want that. It may prevent good clean solder joints. So good practice if you happen to have some IPA. All right, so organization here is key. If you wanna have a successful build, count out your parts, make sure everything you're supposed to have is there, and then get started. And okay. Now these are resistors, and it doesn't matter which way you plug them in. These are not polarized parts, which means you can put them in this way, you can put them in the other way, and it really doesn't matter. As you see in the picture, the part is actually sticking off the board because they didn't have enough board space to, to lay it down flat. So bend one leg around, bring it through, put it through the hole and then bend the legs out like this, use your finger, and then you can take your soldering iron and solder it together. So bring in the soldering iron from one side, make sure that you're touching both the leg and the pad so that both parts are getting warm. And then when you bring in your solder, you should see it solder itself to both the pad and the leg. And once you've got that, you can take your wire cutters and just snip these legs off, you don't need these. Make sure you get rid of these. You do not want these going into your foot in the middle of the night. Or if you have pets, you don't want them eating this stuff. This is sharp and it is dangerous and it can cause you a lot of pain. So make sure you get rid of these clippings. So basically that's the process for resistors. You just find the next one, plug it in and then move on. Yeah, 
notes are right there. You can see that that Hershey's Kiss sort of shape as it wicks to both the, the pad itself, but also the leg. And that's when you know you've got a good solder joint. These will cut quite flat right up on the bottom of the board, which is, which is a nice thing. You don't want to scratch up the board, but it is nice to get this as close as you can. Now it's time to do the diodes. So remember what I said about these resistors, that you can plug them in any way and it doesn't matter? Well, with diodes, it's the opposite. So you've got these, these things, and diodes are like one-way valves for electricity. So it, the current can flow in one direction, but it blocks the flow in the other direction. And if you look closely on the diode, you can see that there's a line right there. Right, so that, that tells you something, that's important. If you look closely on the board, so there's an arrow and a line. And so there's the arrowhead and there's the line. That means this diode needs to go in this orientation. Okay, so this line on the diode needs to line up with the, with the line on the PCB. So I bought this kit at full price and I'm not endorsed by 4MS in any way. I happen to be living in Stockholm, Sweden right now, so I picked this kit up from Escape From Noise here in town. It's a great shop and shout out to Ulf who runs it. He's a real gentleman and he really knows the modular synth market inside out. So this is a voltage regulator. I've talked about this in another video. What this does is it takes an incoming voltage on one of its pins and brings it down to, in this case, five volts. And the orientation of this one's very important. It's important that you get it right. And they mentioned that here in the, the notes too. Anytime you're plugging in a socket like this, I don't know if you can tell, but this is not on there properly. But since I've only done one leg, what I can do is put some pressure on the back of the socket and then loosen this. And you heard it snap into place there. And so now we should have a socket that is nice and flush up against the bottom of the board. So question for this video, what was your last DIY project and how did you do with the soldering? And what kind of projects would you like to see me do next on this channel? Leave your ideas below and maybe I can do one of them in a future video. When I plug this in, I make sure that my hand's on the power. So if I start seeing any problems or if any smoke's starting to come out, I can immediately pull this out. We should see all these light up except the first light because that one requires a signal. We'll see if that happens. So here we go. Looks good. Yay! Everything seems to be firing. All the LEDs are correct. I'm not seeing any smoke coming out of it. And let's see if this guy works. Yeah, this looks good. This looks like it works. I'm gonna test out all the rest of the features and then I'm gonna cover the actual use of this in a separate video. So if you like this video or got something out of it, please click that like button, smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with my latest and share this with your geeky DIY friends. It really helps get the word out about this channel. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.